everyone. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be going over some Victoria Beckham products, primarily the contour stick, but I did also pick up a cream blush just to test it out because I never have. So today's video, I'll be going over details of the contour stick, pulling you in a little bit closer, doing a first impression application, and then just going over my thoughts. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, stick around. But with all that out of the way, let's just get started talking about the details of the contour stick. All right, I'm gonna try and keep the details pretty brief because there's not too much to talk about, but I do wanna go over just the price and the shades. Now it is quite slim and that is what initially intrigued me about this. I haven't seen too many contour sticks that are just really slim like this. So I thought it would be perfect for nose contour specifically, not that I contour my nose that often, but I just, I don't know, there's something about this that made me pull the trigger on it. I don't have too many Victoria Beckham products. I really only have the single shadows. I have mink and tea rose. I'll probably be applying those today as well, but that's why I just wanted to pick this up. So it retails for $38 with 1.1 grams of product, and that's not a lot of product. I'm gonna just twist this all the way up here and show you. It looks like it is because it's such a thin stylus type pen, but it really isn't. I mean, it's you know shorter than my pinky and thinner than my pinky just for size comparison. So I think if you're doing an all over face contour, it really isn't gonna last you that long. You really have to love it. So for $38, I think it's a little bit pricey. And you know, Victoria Beckham's known for being a pricey brand. So that's just up to you. I'm gonna swatch the shade that I picked up, which is Marble. So that is the second shade in the range. It comes in four shades. So this is for light to medium skin tones. And I picked it up because I prefer a little bit more of a cool undertone. It does claim that all four shades have a neutral undertone, but the first shade looked a smidge warmer to me than this one. So that's why I picked it up. We're gonna see if it's too dark for me and just, we're gonna find out together. And then for the blush stick, this isn't new or anything, but I figured I'd pick it up because it's kind of been on my wish list for a while now. And I figured if I was going to place an order, I might as well. I picked up the shade Fever, which is kind of like this bright orangey, very, it's more coral than orange. It's looking orange to me right now in the viewfinder, but it really is more of a coral versus an orange. And I've just been into more brighter blushes recently. I finally hopped on that trend. Probably already noticed does differ from the blush stick as far as packaging. This is like her typical, I would say, very brandable packaging. She's known for this tortoise packaging. The single shadows have these. So I was a little bit surprised that the stylist didn't come in the same packaging. However, I will say that they both feel very luxury. This doesn't feel like cheap plastic. This is still heavier though. So I don't know, kind of a con for me. I do just wish that it was the same packaging across the board. I feel like she's known for that at this point. So I'm not sure what the issue was. I'm sure there was a reason why she switched it but a little bit disappointed. The last really mentionable thing are the key ingredients to this product. So it's supposed to have squalene, not really memorable, and line filler to just kind of like fill in the lines, I guess, and not like sink into lines. And then blue lotus wax, that was the one that really stood out to me. It's supposed to also be in this cream blush formula, and it's supposed to soften and protect the skin, but I just wanted to point that out because I haven't seen blue lotus wax in any kind of makeup product. I don't really find ingredients that interesting because I feel like they're super hyped up when they talk about them on their website, but I just wanted to point that out because that was the one that stood out to me. But now that I've gone over the details of the contour stick and a little bit of the blush stick, I'm gonna pull you in a little bit closer. I'm gonna test this out with you together. Hopefully it doesn't turn out too bad. I'll probably just apply the Lid Lust as well, just to kind of have all my Victoria Beckham products on my face. And we'll just find out my first impression thoughts on this. 
So I've already had most of my base makeup on, and by that I mean I did my brows and foundation. I'm using the Very Valentino foundation. It's about time I did a foundation roundup, but I love this foundation so, so much. Everything that I'm wearing that I don't talk about is always listed in the description box below, but let's just get started. I did not apply concealer only because if I'm using a cream, a contour, or cream blush, I usually do concealer after just because I set it with powder. So let's just go into this. I kind of want to try the method, not the method, but the way that I saw the model on the Victoria Beckham website, how she had it done. And she had it where she had like a cross here. I'm trying to like see both. She had a cross like right by her hairline, a little line here, a little line here, then a line here and a line on her jawline. So this is how they showed it. I think I'm gonna use a sponge and a brush, just see what I prefer. Nine times out of 10, I prefer a sponge, just being honest, but just to see how it blends out with a brush as well. This time I'm gonna use the sponge only because it's been sitting for a second while I've been talking and that's gonna help it blend out better than with the brush since it's been drying. So let's just get to blending. My damp sponge here, I'm gonna start on my cheek. It's blending out okay. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to not blend out too patchy only because it is so thin. If it was a thicker line, you might have more of trouble just blending it out, but because it's so thin, it is really precise. And I like that about this. I just wish it had more product, but I also see how it probably can't. Now, I think for me and just my face shape, probably a little bit too much on the temples here. I don't like to contour my forehead too, too much. I don't feel like I have like a extremely large forehead. So I'm just gonna continue. I think it gives like a nice shadow. I do already have like just a natural hollowness to my cheekbones just a little bit. I have a very square face. And I do, honestly, I like to accentuate that. I like my cheekbones a lot and that's one of my favorite features. And I just try not to go too far in because right here is like where I don't necessarily love, but right here I do. So it is blending and giving a really nice shadow so far. Really like that. The sponge worked great. It's definitely more natural. Let's now try this side with the brush. I'm a little bit just nervous because this is so natural and light and I had the second shade just for diversity reasons because I don't consider myself a light to medium. I really consider myself like a true light. So if this is for light medium, I think that you're gonna have to go pretty dark, but I can't speak too much on that, just on this. I mean, it looks dark going on and I'm gonna kind of do more my way which would be like right up there as far as contour and for the brush i'm going to use the bk beauty 109 and again just like go in on the cheekbone first yeah see it's not blending as easily and it's definitely darker already i should probably i'm gonna kind of even this out before it dries down too much it does have some play time. I don't think it dries down really, really fast, but I also don't want it to sit for five minutes. So, okay, it's blending out much better. It is very blendable, I'll give it that. I kind of blend this up into my hairline. I just recently got these BK Beauty brushes and I really like them. I had it in my haul from America. I'll link that video up above. I had my mom bring some stuff over when she went to America to visit. I live in Europe and I had her pick up these brushes because I did not want to pay custom taxes on these brushes. It probably would have been like an extra $30 just in taxes. So I had her pick them up and bring them here for me to save myself a little bit of money because these are already, 
I wouldn't say they're Sonia G prices, but they're kind of pricey. Okay. So here's the brush side versus the sponge side. Like I said, nine times out of 10, I just prefer the sponge side over the brush side. Everyone's different, but for me, it's just easier to have one tool. I'm gonna just go over this a little bit. I feel like it just spreads the product out more. This is very, very light, very light. I'm surprised at how undetectable it is because the camera will really emphasize the shadows. And I feel like even in the viewfinder, it's not showing that much. I've had some times where I've applied like a little too much in person and it looks 10 times worse on camera. So the fact that it actually looks natural on camera is telling me it's just, it's really light in person. I don't hate that. Depends on the look you're going for but this is not gonna give you a very BAM contour, which really is more my preference for every day. I guess if I wanted a heavier contour, I'd go into powder. It looks really nice so far. I mean, no complaints. I'm gonna quickly apply the blush and just see how this looks. This isn't new, like I said, so this is more just for me. This is an e.l.f. stippling brush, and I'm gonna go in with this. I like this for cream blush and it is very corally it's less orange it is definitely more of like a coral pink and I haven't tried you know any of Victoria Beckham's the powder bronzer any of her other products even the eye crayons those have been on my list for a while but I really don't use eyeliner I don't need it so while it might be well known that her products are more natural, I am still a little bit surprised at the effect that I'm getting because this was bright and this is like the perfect bright flush for me. This actually looks like a very natural flush. Like this is what my cheeks would look like if I was actually blushed. I really like this. It is very deceiving in the tube. I'm also just gonna add a little dot there. I mean, you can see how bright it is and go over it with my sponge and see which one's better. Surprisingly, I think that I like the brush for the blush. It kind of made a little bit more of an impact. Well, I don't know. Can you even really see it? I think I'm gonna add another layer. It's very natural. I would keep it like this for every day for me, but I'm gonna just try and build it up so we can get a little bit more going here. It's a little bit better. I really like this color though. That's what I'm most surprised about quickly blend this one too before it dries too much. It does build, but it's really not gonna give you a bold, bold blush look. It built up, but barely. So I would say if you're more into really, really punchy blushes, this is not for you. Even with the color that I purchased, this, you can just see how much it shears out. I'm wondering when I go back to edit this footage, like how much you're actually gonna be able to see because it is such a natural, really like no makeup makeup, very like sophisticated vibes is what I'm getting from this. But now I kind of just wanna throw on a lid lust. I was going to go with mink at first because that one's my favorite. It's in Shop My Stash. I'll also link that video up above. But then I was thinking the blush might be too warm tone for it. So I was gonna go with T-Rose. That's the only two that I have. And now I don't know because it's so natural that maybe I'll still go with Mink. Let me just swatch them side by side. Okay, so here is Fever blended out on my hand. And then the top is T-Rose, the bottom is Mink. 
Mink is just so much darker, but I do prefer it over tea rose. I think we're going to do a mixture of both. That's just what it's going to have to be. I'm going to try and see how sheer I can make mink, and then maybe we'll put tea rose kind of in the middle for like a, a little bit extra sparkle. So let's do it that way. I'm going to take a BK Beauty 212. It's like a very wispy, fluffy blending brush. I'm hoping I don't get a lot of fallout, and I'm going to lightly tap into mink. And I am going to press, but also just try and get like a wash of color. And then maybe even if I need to blend it out with my finger, I can do that. It's kind of showing up light like I wanted it to. And I'm just realizing now I didn't contour my nose, did I? Because that is not something I normally do, which is why I completely forgot about it. There is zero fallout though, so I appreciate that. And it is really just shearing out like I wanted. So it's not as dark as the, the heavy swatch that I did. And then now I'm gonna take a smaller blending brush just to keep it sheer. This is a Refer 13. Go into T-Rose and just put this in the middle. Keep this very light makeup look. can barely see T-Rose, but I feel like it's there. I'm gonna kinda go a little bit higher here just for my hooded eyes. And that's it, that's how I'm gonna leave this. I'll probably put a little bit of mink on the lower lash line, but let me just do the second eye off of camera, finish up my makeup. I missed out on the nose contour. I'm not good at it anyway, so it probably would have looked a little bit botched. I would have given myself a botched nose job. So we're just going to skip it. Pretend like that didn't happen, even though I super hyped up the nose contour in the beginning of this video. I am sorry. If you want to see like a short, maybe a YouTube short on the nose contour, let me know down below in the comments. I can always do that. Let me go finish up my makeup, though, and I'll just talk about my first impression thoughts on these products. Makeup is finished, so here is what it's looking like. And let's go over my thoughts on these products. So I usually ask myself two questions when thinking and using a product for the first time. First question, do I feel pretty with the final look? The answer is yes. I do like this look a lot. It is different for me. I usually go for a more bronzy contour look versus a blush heavy look. This is a little bit more blush. The contour is super subtle. I'm gonna try and keep this more focused on the contour since that's the new product and the blush is not. And the second question is, would I rebuy this again? And you know, I think the answer's no. I'm going to have to think about it a little bit more. I'm going to have to play around with it a little bit more. This is a first impression. I do always come back with first impressions and give more detailed thoughts on them and just do like a roundup video on first impression products. So make sure you're subscribed for that. But this I just need a little bit more time to play with. My issue right now is that for me, this is, it's very light. And I got the second shade up in a four shade range. So it's not showing up like I would personally want it to. If I wasn't doing this video, I 100% would have gone over this with a powder bronzer to just give me a little bit more warmth to the skin. But that's just me and my preferences. I do think there's like, once or twice a year where maybe I would go for this look, just like a very subtle contour where you can really barely see it and a more blushed look. Again, I like this look. I feel pretty in this, but it's just not something I love for every day for me. I'm just not mad at it. So I'm just really on the fence with this. I don't think that it's a bad product. I do think that there's a time and place for this. You know, without going too deep into this, I don't want to make my final thoughts very long, but like I know that the buckle fat removal is a huge trend right now. So if you're someone who like has already had that procedure, no judgment from me, I have not. But 
If you're someone who's already had that procedure, maybe you would like this because it's more subtle and something a little bit harsher, a little deeper would be too, too much of an emphasis on that. If you're someone like me though, I haven't had it. Like, you know, I still, still got like the chubby cheeks here. Like I just want a little bit more like, like I want a little bit more. <laughs> so that's why I'm just on the fence. Do I think that there are people who will absolutely die hard love this product? Yes, I think it is a good product. It is blendable. The color is neutral. It is nice. It is not too cool gray leaning. It's not too warm orange leaning. I think this is a very good contour color if you're my skin tone. For me, it's just lacking a little bit of pigment and maybe I need to go in more and try it more. I did not try to build it up. I did not try and layer it and just see how it worked. This is one layer exactly how it is. And with the blush, I did two layers. So all I'm saying is I need a little bit more time with this, but right now it's really, it's just smack dab in the middle for me. The blush stick, however, I'm head over heels. Like this was immediately like a 10 out of 10 for me. I really like this. And I was a little nervous to pick this up because I don't have too many cream blushes and I don't have any stick cream blushes. I used to have the Chanel stick cream blush. I decluttered that. You can view my declutter playlist if you want to see my declutters. But I ended up decluttering that because I didn't like it. This shade though, while it looks scary in the tube, trust me, like it took me a long time to get on this blush train that is happening right now that's probably almost over, but this color blends out to perfection. It looks like the perfect flush on your cheeks. I really like this blush. The contour stick, I just need a little bit more time. The Lid Lusts, the Mink, and the Tea Rose. I mean, these are solids for me. I think that this is a cult classic for Victoria Beckham. These are the two shades I would recommend. Not that I've tried other ones, but I'm pretty sure that Tea Rose is her number one selling product or at least shade for these Lid Lusts. So that's just a little bit of my thoughts. You'll have to let me know down below in the comments what you think. I know that this is kind of like a wishy-washy final thoughts. I don't like doing that too much. I really like to try and have like a more solid foundation on my thoughts and then test it out more and just see where I can go from there if I can make it better. But I'm really, I'm undecided. I'm just undecided. I think what's holding me back is the price point but we'll just have to see where it goes from here once I test it out a few more times and see what I say in my roundups because my mind can change, it has before. So that's where I'm gonna leave you all. I hope this video was helpful. Again, let me know your thoughts down below if you plan on picking this product up, if you already have it and what you think of it, but I'm gonna let you go and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.